In this quick video, I'm going to show you how to register for an ORCID. Now, an ORCID is an Open Researcher and Contributor ID. This is a 16-digit ID that you can use uh, to link to your published works. An ORCID is a registry of unique identifiers for researchers and scholars. It's free, open, global, and community-driven. Signing up for an ORCID identifier and using it in your research workflows will ensure that you receive credit for your work but it can also help simplify manuscript and grant submissions and improve author search results. To sign up for an ORCID, you go to ORCID.org. That's O-R-C-I-D.org. We're going to register. It just takes about a minute. We're going to add in our information, and then we're going to talk a little bit about how to use your ORCID ID. Now to register, you just click here, and you fill in the form. Once you fill in the form, you're going to set your privacy settings. So I would suggest that you keep this public because the idea is to be open to the public and make yourself more findable. But you can set it to um, private or limited or to completely private if you choose to not share it with other people. Uh, again, it's probably best to keep it public because uh, it sort of defeats the purpose to keep it, pri keep it private. Um, you just want to check the boxes to say you're not a robot and you accept the terms and you'll register. Now for me here, once I register, it's going to let me know that I already exist in the system. So it's going to look for me and make sure that I don't duplicate my profile. In that case, I'm going to go ahead and sign in. Once you sign in to ORCID, you'll see it's pretty simple, straightforward to use. You want to add in your education, all of your education as you go. You can add it in manually here. Of course, you want to update this as you add more degrees. Um, when you start to add in your, your university or your institution, you'll see that MD Anderson pops up. If you're with a graduate school, you can start typing in Graduate School of Biomedical Sciences. And you'll see it's a little ways down the list, uh, but here it is. So if I was part of the G GSBS program, I could select that as my institution. So once I've added in my education, I want to add my employment in. It's very similar. You just add manually, and you enter this in as you go. Uh, I can add in funding if I have funding sources. Uh, and then the meat of this profile is adding in works. Now this goes beyond just publications. I can add in things like this is a conference poster that I did. Uh, you can add in patents. You can add in lots of other materials. So if I want to add in, I can add in manually here. Of course, that's a little time consuming, but for things like patents um, or conference proceedings, perhaps this might be the easiest way to add these in. Otherwise, I can also link to outside sources uh, to find my publications. So I can go to Add Works and search and link. Now from here, there's lots of different data sources you can pull from. The ones that I recommend um, to start with are Crossref and Scopus uh, to ORCID. Now both of these are tools that are already populated for you, so they're very easy to link to. If I want to use Crossref, it's very simple. I just click on Crossref Metadata. I authorize them to access my account and to add publications, and it's going to do a search for you. Now, of course, it's going to find way more than you actually produced. Um, I haven't written 1,400 articles, but you can see the ones that I have written have popped to the top here, and then um, I have added them to my profile. To add them to your profile, you just click Add to ORCID. So if this was mine, I would choose Add to ORCID, and it's as simple as that. The other thing you can do is go to your name over here in the upper right-hand corner, choose Settings, and Sync with ORCID. Uh, one of the advantages to this is that it will sync back to your ORCID account, but it will also notify you through email if there is additional publications that have come out that they think might be yours. The other tool that's important to use for us, especially in medicine and sciences, is Scopus. So if I click Scopus to ORCID, it's going to link me to Scopus. The first thing it'll do, it's going to take me through several steps, but the first thing is going to, it's going to ask me for my profile. Um, if your name is a little bit more common, there may be five, six, ten profiles that pop up here. Um, and this is one of those author ambiguity issues. We sometimes have similar names. Um, luckily, my name is pretty unique, so I can select this box and choose Next. 
and go through the, the following steps. It's very straightforward. They just want you to review your publications and check the ones that are yours, as you can see that I've already done. You can choose next. Uh, I'm going to review them again. I'm going to send my author ID by including my email address. It will connect to my ORCID account. And then finally, I'm going to send my publication list to ORCID. Now this will link back up to my ORCID account uh, so I can see the publications as they come through. Just to review, to build your profile, you want to take three different steps. You want to register for ORCID, you want to complete your profile, and you want to be sure to go in and update your profile. Because it's no good if someone's Googling you and you're, they find your profile and it's not up to date. So be sure to go through it again and update your profile. Some of the ways that you can use your ORCID ID, again, it's just a 16-digit identifier, is you can add it to your email signature, you can add it to a personal website or blog, you can put it on your resume, um, and of course, you can link it to your Scopus profile. If you have any questions about how to do, take any of these steps or use ORCID, you can contact the Research Medical Library at 22282 or at rml-help at mdanderson.org.